My name is Jonathan Bell, and in this brief talk, I will describe our solution for revealing injection vulnerabilities in web apps by leveraging existing tests. But before getting into our approach, let me first describe an example of the kind of vulnerability that we search for. In this case, a SQL injection vulnerability. A SQL injection attack occurs when an untrusted user input, in this case, this name parameter, captured from a web form, flows without validation into a command that's executed by the database, in this case, the query string. In this example, an attacker could use apostrophes in their input, as shown, to break out of the quoting on the name parameter, allowing that attacker to execute arbitrary SQL expressions, in this case, selecting all accounts from a table instead of just one. Now, I'm sure many watching this video are saying, didn't we solve the SQL injection thing in the 90s? And how bad could a SQL injection attack really get? Well, it turns out that in today's complicated multi-tier web applications, attackers can inject far more than just SQL code and can get to situations where they're executing arbitrary code on a remote server, which can be extremely devastating, as we saw in the 2017 Equifax data breach that at its root was caused by an injection vulnerability in a Java web app. So broadly, we're interested in detecting code injection vulnerabilities. And SQL injection is just one example of that. Cross-site scripting attacks are another variant of code injection attacks where attacker controlled inputs are executed not on the server, but in clients browsers. And of course, we're also interested in the extremely dangerous Java expression injection attacks where attackers can potentially execute arbitrary code on a server. So how do developers write code that's resilient to these kinds of attacks? The simplest answer is by using input sanitization. Let's consider the same SQL injection attack from just a moment ago. In this code example, that malicious user could submit an input including an apostrophe, breaking the input out of the quotes and allowing them to execute some arbitrary SQL code. However, if instead of inserting inputs from the user verbatim, any apostrophes were escaped with backslashes, then the attacker couldn't break out of the quoted string, couldn't run their attack. Of course, this was a simple example, but the same overall tactic can be applied to all kinds of code injection attacks, where a specialized sanitizer is placed between an attacker-controlled input and vulnerable APIs. So what can developers do to check to see if these validators and sanitizers exist and are properly placed? Well, Static analyzers for code injection detection look for insecure data flows, but can be tedious, prone to false positives and also to false negatives. There are also usually manual steps. For instance, analysts need to identify which methods correctly sanitize input values to whitelist them. Penetration testing, on the other hand, aims to systematically attack the system and hence will have no false positive reports to investigate. But since it's a testing-based approach, it's impossible to be complete can't guarantee that it finds all vulnerabilities. Most worrisome is that penetration testing is a long process, since the analyst must often try hundreds of attack inputs for each possible attack vector. Here's an example of the suggested attack strings for performing penetration testing for cross-site scripting attacks. There are over 200 inputs here, which an analyst needs to try on every single potential input source on an application. Penetration testing is extremely labor intensive. Rivulet effectively performs guided automated penetration testing. However, automated testing is hard, especially in applications that have complex workflows that must be followed in order to reach a vulnerability. Consider, for instance, a hypothetical healthcare application. The vulnerable component here, used to message a healthcare provider about a recent telemedicine reading, could only be observed after logging in as a patient with telemedicine monitoring and submitting valid but abnormal blood pressure or glucose level readings. It's extremely difficult for an unguided test generator to satisfy this kind of complicated workflow. And hence, we focus on a better source of guidance. Rivulet instead seeks guidance from the test cases the developers have already written, which are not security tests. Rivulet works by enhancing existing functional tests to also check for security properties. For instance, imagine the developer who wants to test this application already wrote a test called Test Message Healthcare Provider. And that test might already expose this complicated workflow of logging in as the patient, entering the telemedicine data, and submitting the message. But there's just an assertion that checks to make sure that there are no errors in these steps. It's purely a functional test, not checking anything security. Rivulet amplifies this test. By using its embedded analysis, it can detect that that last component is vulnerable to injection attacks and generate exploits to demonstrate them. 
Rivulet detects injection vulnerabilities by combining tank tracking and testing in a three-phase model. First, Rivulet detects candidate tests that might be used to detect security vulnerabilities. It does this by executing each of the original developer-provided tests using dynamic tank tracking, where it intercepts each HTTP request as it arrives in the application server, tainting each component of the request, and then inspecting when that tainted data arrives at a potentially vulnerable sync location, like one that can execute code, where it can then inspect the taint tags on that data to identify which, if any, of the user-controlled inputs flowed to it. In this case, a cookie header was detected as flowing back to the user through an HTTP response, which could be exploited in a cross-site scripting attack. So for each of these candidate tests, Rivlet then cleverly reruns them, but modifying the values supplied by the test case, in this case changing the session ID variable to an attack string. The modified test is executed again with taint tracking, and this time, if the new malicious input flows into the HTTP response, Rivulet examines the entire response to determine if an attack really occurred. This step is important because simply seeing tainted data flow to a vulnerable method call does not imply an attack. In the first example here, the attack string is contained in a comment, and hence, not a successful attack. When Rivulet generates an attack string that does defeat the comment, however, the vulnerability is confirmed, and Rivulet generates a one-click reproduction script to help developers investigate the vulnerability. While this example shows Rivulet detecting a cross-site scripting vulnerability, we use the same approach to detect SQL and Java expression injection too. Recall that one of the limitations of penetration testing is that there is a humongous number of possible attack strings to test. Rivulet condenses all of these hundreds of potential possibilities into just eight vulnerability patterns with several escaping rules. And then it leverages its dynamic data flow analysis to determine the precise context of a user-controlled input within the overall attack. For instance, continuing the same example where a session ID header flows into an HTML comment in a page return to a user, Rivulet cannot tell that the input ultimately flows into the comment and hence only generate inputs that can break out of that kind of comment, doesn't need to try all of the other possible combinations. We implemented Rivulet using our dynamic tank tracking system, Phosphor. Rivulet works with entirely off-the-shelf JVMs and applications. It doesn't require access to source code, and it easily integrates with commonly used automated testing frameworks like JUnit and Maven. We evaluated Rivulet on several benchmark suites, as well as on three open source web apps. Rivulet detected six new vulnerabilities in open source apps and significantly outperformed existing injection detection tools on benchmarks. Rivulet is freely available on GitHub, and my co-authors and I would be happy to talk to anyone who's interested in working with them. Thank you.